Hi friends. So it's been a couple of weeks since the last episode. I know that I promised I was going to do one every single week and I've uh, fallen within the first month of that. However, I have a good excuse. I was away in Palmer on a yacht and then in Dubai with my dad. It's a hard life, I know. <laughs> this week, I'm sitting down with Yusuf and Johnny from Propane Fitness and this is probably my most anticipated episode to date. When I say mine, I mean by myself, not by anybody else. Um, we're going to be discussing the ethical use of technology and how social networks, social media manipulates our cognitive biases and uses unseen persuasion techniques to keep you on site. Now, all of this might sound a little tinfoil hatty, but I promise you it's not. It is, as far as I'm concerned, probably one of the biggest and most important issues that we've got going on at the moment. If you think about how ubiquitous phone use is amongst everybody on the planet, the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which recently came out where it turned out that some users on Facebook's data had been illegally acquired and manipulated, caused absolute uproar. And all that was happening there was people were being targeted with ads and some of their data had been stolen. Your phone is stealing your time and that's the one resource that we can't get any of it back. That, to me, is a much bigger scandal that needs to be spoken about. Our phones are with us more than any partner, any friend, any family member, any pet, probably any other item that we own. They're with us every single step of the way and they're possessions that we cherish to a degree and that we live our lives through. They're a window between us and the world. They mediate our experience of the external world and they manipulate our experience and our judgment of other people, both celebrity and friend. It's something that we put an awful lot of faith into. And yet our brains are being hacked by billion dollar companies and behind every press of every button on your phone, there is a team of software engineers who have manipulated you into pressing that particular button in order to keep you on site because they need your attention because that is how the money is made on that particular platform. So hopefully you will come out of this understanding the tactics that are being used to keep you on your phone. You'll be more aware of why and how this is happening. And also we will give you some tips and some strategies that you can implement to mitigate the amount of time that you get trapped within your phone. So without further ado, here we go. I think someone was selling a dildo on Facebook Marketplace yesterday. Rampant rabbit. It, that, did, is that the I thing that you said? I might have sent it to you, but... Yeah. You said, don't, like, don't believe when you say it's not being used. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, why, why else are you selling it? Like... Who well, buys, it hasn't been used. Maybe it was a gift, and they thought... Yeah, they have two of them. Mm, still, I wouldn't trust it. I would, well, someone, could have, someone could have been purchased, too, thinking that they wanted that. They bought it they online. <laughs> and they didn't. They, they overestimated their sexual Capacity. appetite. I yeah. see. So either I was just doing it. they double-tapped the Add to Cart button, or they tried it, didn't like it. Either way, I'm not putting it in my vagina. I think it's a... Well, it's not just the vagina, is it? Potentially. Or, or bum. Yeah, you're right. Mm. That's I think you can put should, it anywhere. That's what's, that's what's so great about them. Yeah, we shouldn't discriminate. I think that's very <laughs> judgmental of us to assume vagina. Judgmental on who? People that prefer anal. Yeah. People with yeah, or without vaginas. We need to be nice to... Docking. Could use it for docking. Docking. Could use the second one for docking. Can you explain in the clearest possible way... What docking is. Uh, when a man interpenetrates another man with his... With a tool. A tool. Urinary tract. Right? With a device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. Interpenetrates. So he places his appendage in... <laughs> <laughs> into another man's appendage. <laughs> so Is that right? I, I mean, you'd think it wouldn't be possible. <laughs> I thought, but well, I thought I can tell you. About <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker, Boston. Boston. So when you say appendage, 
You don't mean oh, I see what you're saying. Not not entire package. Just yep. yeah. Right. Lip on lip. lip. Or not. I'm not sure if it's I thought I thought this Is it penis I, on penis, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Penis in penis. Yeah, penis so lip on lip on lip. What's lip on lip? The little lip entrance at the top of the penis. <laughs> is that the, have you not you maybe is, don't know is, 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 is that the politically correct <laughs> the non racialist? Don't be racialist. I suppose if it if it looks like a Sort of like an old, a toothless old man from all of the <laughs> cartonisation. Oh, God. Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> you have to start again? No, it's fine. We can just go from now. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Um, so, this is a podcast I've wanted to do for ages, but we keep on having to put it off for different reasons. Um, we did a podcast called Distraction is Destruction. Excellent podcast. Excellent podcast. Propamepodcast.com forward slash... Oh, <laughs> forward slash distraction. Don't ask us that. We'll, we'll change the link for you Mate, guys. I can't, I can't remember that, that. Was that the one with the... Yeah, with the arm, With the arm things. Mm. So, basically, we... we all are trying to reduce our phone time. Or well, this was, what, about a year ago, maybe? Mm. Trying to reduce our phone time and um, decided <clears> to do a podcast on how it felt when we use our phone too much and tactics that you can do to reduce that. That, to me, felt like my first Christmas. And over the last six months, all of the stuff that I've learned feels like finding out that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> That's... As in... It's all a lie to keep you inside and you can't get out. Just the, the odds I, are stacked against you. With, I just entered into this world like a year ago of mm. phone use is maybe something that I need to consider a little bit more deeply than I have done. And then now it's just opened up this entire world of cognitive bias manipulation and persuasive techniques and a whole load of other stuff. Um, so It's interesting because I used to really care about it and I've just resigned to the fact that I don't care. I've, uh, without exaggeration, this is probably one of the top five passionate topics I've got in my life at the moment. Really? Yeah. Like just U- using your phone less? Um, <laughs> I guess creating a... You deliver things like that in such a way that I can't work it out. It sounds like a mocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fine. Turn the game down. Just a little bit less game. We once did a, a podcast where I've, I've had my microphone set up just as I want it for ages. Yusuf came in, changed my game, and it ruined the entire <laughs> fucking thing. It was like a half an hour video, which was wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Yusuf was in the middle of mocking you for being passionate about phone use. But I, I, it's not about the passionate about phone use thing. It's just, I think that it's something that everybody, it's so ubiquitous, the problem of using your phone too much. Mm. And the... The argument is that technology is neutral. It's how you use it that determines what the the outcome, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That behind Mm -hmm. every click of a button, there's a thousand software engineers who have designed the particular route that you have taken through that app or through that website to get you to click on that thing. Mm. And it's a very... What's more insidious, it's not even just them sitting and designing it a priori in a room on their own. It's like data-driven every time it... Every time there's iterations of thousands of people, it optimizes more and more to make you stay on the page more and more, or click the button, or well, and they're split testing constantly. thousands of variations. To, yeah. yeah, So it's it's a, a combination of the best computers on the planet, the biggest supercomputers running all of the data that they can, and some of the cleverest software designers mm. in the world who are setting them off on the right path. Yeah. And then you add into it the stuff like disinformation, this Cambridge Analytica thing that just won't go away at the moment, mm. um, all of the fake news and stuff like that. And that's like, to me personally, the fake news and delivering advertising that's curated heavily towards what someone thinks, that's like a drop in the ocean. That's Yeah, it's manipulating what someone thinks. But time is the one resource that we can't get any, any of it back, right? Mm. And manipulating someone to be addicted to using an app or compulsively checking the phone is a, like a fucking war crime. And we are in comparison. <laughs> that thing you sent about dark patterns. Yeah. Really interesting. Did you watch that? Yeah. Really interesting. We're defenseless. 
I think to, a lot of it. on the Amazon website, so I know it's not an app, but like to cancel your account, you've got to go through like 40 Cockroach stars. Hotel. And it's a really small print thing. I remember yeah. you saying as well that Amazon comes across as so innocent because it looks like it's been designed in 1999 GeoCities, like really kind yeah. of yeah. simple. So you think, oh, well, they're such a benign company. Like mm. it's just a, a website where you buy things. and But actually... It's a Death Star. Oh, it's a f- I remember absolute, watching that video absolute. thinking... Like you know when you you know when you use something a lot. I'm trying to give another example. So Facebook's another example where like you think the design's like pretty fucking like play school basic. You isn't think it, it like, is, yeah. It's like guys, put a bit more effort in than a blue banner and a F in the middle. Like <laughs> they the own same, that blue now as well, don't they? Do they? You can't use that. No one can use that. Blue. It is a very recognisable blue. Yeah, wow, fair, fair point. But you look at it and think, so Amazon looks so basic. The website, mm. and you're like everything's in really small font at the bottom and then black and white not as there's no moving adverts exactly there's not much going on and then you watch that <coughs> the video that it walks you through what's actually going on and you're like we'll put, we'll put links to the description in this but basically so for, it's all on purpose for, oh. for me all of this got kicked off by a podcast between Tristan Harris and Sam Harris Tristan Tristan um, and he is the founder <laughs> of um, time well spent and the Centre for Humane Technology, um, humanetech.com, I think it is, that you can have a look at some of the more stuff about that. And basically, he used to be the design ethicist or design philosopher at Google, and he started asking questions about whether or not people are being manipulated ethically on their phone. So it, this feels honestly feels like I'm like opening the floodgates to a world of shit, but really, like I, I genuinely don't think that there's a topic which can be more ubiquitous for people to need to know about. Like at the moment, it's uh, for me, it's really, really important. And hopefully people find a little bit of value in this. Um, so basically I think it's like common, I'd say it's commonly accepted amongst almost everybody, even like my mum and my dad know that they probably use their phones a little bit too much. And a perfect example of this, I couldn't believe it. So I've just been away to Dubai. I was at the top of the Burj Khalifa with my dad who hasn't been on holiday for 17 years. Wow. Right. So I'm nearly a kilometre up in the air, lion's share of a kilometre, 148th floor, largest, tallest building in the world, um, tallest observatory platform in the world. And we'd got up there. Dad hasn't been on holiday in nearly two decades, (laughs) right? And we've flown seven and a half hours and paid however much money and all the rest of it. And I went to the bathroom and I came back out to see that he was sat down on the couch on his phone. (laughs) And I was like, Dad, what are you doing on on your phone? And he was like, uh, oh, I'm just, uh, just answering some work emails. You do remember that this was your retirement <laughs> trip, Dad. Your holiday was for your retirement. You're retiring and you're answering work emails. And I was just like, I mean, what a perfect and example. And of buzz, didn't yeah. it? And the thing is, so the argument is that... A little red circle on, man, the, it pops on up. the app. The, th- the thing is, do, do, does he want to check his phone when he's at uh, the 148th floor of the Burj Khalifa? No. He doesn't want to check his phone. However, he has checked his phone. Does that mean that that's something he wants to do? It's wizardry, isn't it? Someone's made you do something that you wouldn't have... If someone said, do you want to check your phone and <laughs> check and respond to a work email? The answer would always be, no, I don't want to check my phone and respond to my work email. But they've managed to still make you do that. You see, that? that's the part where I don't know where I lie on that. Because I, I think I do want to check my phone. So I think a lot of the time, like I, we, I was in Budapest with Becca and the whole time I've got my phone in my pocket and if anyone had ever said, had said to me, do you want to Johnny, check mate, phone? have five minutes to yourself, but go yes. over there, <laughs> <laughs> woohoo! So I well, think, I think I'd be okay with it. But I see what you're saying. I understand what you're getting at. But I, but. So I think what Tristan was getting at was the, the present self versus future self. And it's like... You sit on your phone and scroll the newsfeed for half an hour in the morning. Mm. But then if you were to ask yourself, was that time well spent? Would you have wanted to have spent today half an hour scrolling Check. the newsfeed? Got it. Especially when you've got to consider, as we say, time's the one resource that you're not going to get yeah, any of it back. That. And you specifically, as a person who likes to be as efficient as he can with his day, like the time that you spend on your phone, which isn't <clears throat> contributing directly mm. to the objectives that you've got to complete that day, Who's made you choose? Is it leisure time? Does it count as leisure time? So the question is, and the main the main question of this is, does it net a positive for you? Because if it nets a positive for you overall, then sweet. But the problem is that it's a zero-sum game where all different platforms online are competing for our attention. 
So if YouTube adds autoplay, which they've only done within the last 18 months or the last two years, YouTube adds autoplay onto the next video, that upped their um, time on site by between 5 and 10%. YouTube ads or YouTube videos? YouTube added. Added. Oh, okay. Ads. Autoplay of the oh, next... Right. <laughs> That's just an advertiser. That's a that's a market that's a market as a mind there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so YouTube YouTube oh, added in. <laughs> oh my god, I need to I need to go and do this. Um, do YouTube ask. YouTube added in autoplay the next video that increased their time on site by five to ten percent. There's only so many hours in the day, so that five or ten percent has come from somewhere. It's either come from someone's spare time or it's been taken from Facebook or Twitter or mm. Google or whatever it is. And what that means is that Facebook now needs to do autoplay videos as you scroll down. They need to up their armory. It's like an arms race. Mm. It's an arms race to see who can use the most number of manipulative, cognitive bias uh, affecting techniques to, get you, to get you to stay on site. And the fact of the matter is that the economy reflects the more time that someone spends on a site, the more value that company has mm. because the revenue is generated through advertising. And advertising is mostly based on how much exposure are people going to get. How much exposure is directly equal to how much time on site. If you can get people to stay on site, irrelevant of whether or not they want to, you make more money. Yeah. So... A bit of shit when you look at it like that. The, an example that I think, that I think he mentioned in this, and it, it definitely catches me every single time. <laughs> and this is... Th- th- this really hurts my pride because I I see my, I like to see myself as somebody who is... Is it the gay porn? Able no, to... It's, it's the gay porn. I every, always find myself on the gay porn. Um, <laughs> <Bloody hell. laughs> it's... I, I like to pride myself in somebody who can maintain cognitive effort on a single task, having meditated for so long, or at least tried to train for this thing. I, you, you're easily the best person I know at that single thing. The and best yet, meditator. The, okay. the, the best, like, single focus. Like, if he's going to do something... Cal Newport, sit, deep work. Sit and do it, yeah. yeah. And yet, I am still defenceless against, like, okay, I need to quickly check when that person's birthday is on Facebook. Gone. And then, ten minutes later, <laughs> you've closed the tab, you've done t- <clears throat> loads of other things, and you're like, hang on. I didn't even do the thing I went on there for. Every time. And again, this is this is not... The, 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 one of the main points I want to get across during this podcast is that if this is happening to you, not only is it not just you that it's happening to, but it's not your fault. And mm. I think that realising one of the main steps that I think needs to happen is that firstly, people need to realise that there is a problem, that if they were to look back at their day and portion out how much time they spend on their phone, that it is a regrettable action. Like, And this isn't me saying that people shouldn't use Facebook and shouldn't use Twitter and shouldn't use Instagram but because it does it add good. A net positive so for sure, and there is a, use there it is, consciously. There is, there is there is a, um, a Goldilocks zone of how much time you should be spending on there and what you're doing with your time on there as well. But the problem is that these sites are designed in a way to manipulate your cognitive biases so that you do not leave and so that you don't do the thing that you went on there to do. So that you look at the ads, so that you watch the video, so that you do whatever. So I mean, there's a couple of examples that are really really good. Variable schedule rewards are the dopamine release technique that slot machines work on. So you press the button, you wait, something's going to happen. It's either something good or something that's neutral, usually. Twitter, if you open up Twitter on your phone now, press the button, I'll wait. (laughs) And then you wait for the notifications to load. You'll see that the app loads, then your newsfeed loads, and then your mentions load with a number sometimes. Have either of you got... Because I don't have Twitter on my phone, so I've never seen this. I, so, basically, so. basically, all that happens is there's, there's, a, there's a wait. There's a pause between and you loading up. Yeah, they could program it so that it occurred immediately, but they don't. And the reason is the amount of time it, it takes for yes. that to load. So you've got a loading screen there, loading. God, that is painful, isn't it? Yeah, then that'll oh, open, then that'll go, then that'll happen, and then you'll see how many men- mentions you've got that come up. And the reason for that is it is the exact same amount of time wait that a slot machine takes. Then you go, ooh. Ooh, I've got that. I've, t- I'm, I've, 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 got, I've got this. Exactly the same on Instagram. So that, so the, the you know, the alarm bell mm. came at blast. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly. It. Why so, are you waiting? Because it, it's right. that variable schedule reward. That's what you, so Facebook have started it, doing the same thing. Makes you hold right. your breath. Look at Instagram. Load up Instagram and your news feed will load and there will be a half a second wait between that and, you know, and your mentions and your um, the red little tab coming up. So it's the same tactics that make casinos so compulsive and gambling so addictive that... Um, casinos we, are so profitable. Yeah. 
So we, we are addicted to random rewards, more so than predictable rewards, which I find absolutely insane. That you There was a study where they took a bunch of monkeys in a room, gave them, made them do a bunch of tasks, and when they discovered one button to press, it would give them a banana. And they would repeat it, and, uh, and when they stopped that from happening, they, stopped the, they disconnected the button from the reward, the monkeys kept doing it for a bit, and then they stopped. Whereas on another iteration of the study, they gave the monkeys random rewards, and the monkeys started to develop weird rituals that they thought were creating the reward, <laughs> but in fact it was just random. And they thought that if I if I didn't get a reward, then maybe I'm just not doing it right, and they'd keep. I've got going to walk it. this way around the tree. I have yeah. to do this with the button it this all, many times. All, all develop these weird rit- rituals, but then when they stopped giving that random reward, they the can't. monkeys carried on for like a year afterwards, or so, or something really. There's a random. there's one there's one with rats. They gave rats. They pressed a button, and it gave them a tiny tiny amount of cocaine. One of them was I think I've used this example before. Yeah. One of them was a fixed number of times. One of them was press the button and it came out once and never again. And one of them was random. And the random rat iteration, they snapped their spines, oh, God. pressing the button <laughs> trying to get trying to get cocaine. And it's because this random this uh, variable schedule reward is so powerful at dopamine dopamine release. Snap do you know why their spines. snap the spines? Do you know why? So do you know why um, Candy Crush was so successful? It wasn't because of the game. It wasn't because of anything else. It's because of how it manipulated people's dopamine levels. It's the ability, it's it's the lights, it's the sounds, it's the numbers, it's the colours. So why is it why is it that our notifications on our phones are red? Yeah. Yeah. So that so that's what red fruit just occurred, <laughs> occurred to me there was that Twitter's aunt. But Twitter's the, on the home screen they are. And Twitter's uh, uncle. <laughs> well, that so, is terrible. So I've just spent I'm, I'm going, I'm I've just spent <laughs> I've just spent a week with my dad and that would be too daddish even for him because I would normally say aunt but because you're so well spoken aunt but immediately Twitter's aunt Twitter's aunt <laughs> and aunt uncle and the nephews mother father so I think great grandparents <laughs> one of the interesting things that you said there was about going onto your phone and trying to stick to the task in hand like the the rabbit hole that you tumble down like before you know we, we always everyone makes the joke oh absolutely Everyone, everyone makes the joke about, you know, like you start watching videos on YouTube and then three hours later you're watching cats like climb up a tree. You're like, well, is that, that time well, is that time well spent? <laughs> no, of course it's not. Mm. Like, how, how is this? It's literally stealing people's lives. Mm. They're taking yeah. people's lives. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm aware that I'm being sort of fairly, fairly virulent about this. But you did it again. I don't know whether he's taking the piss or not. <laughs> what the, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Whether it's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> No, uh, that, that was in earnest. <laughs> so, um, so it, it's the, it, it, I think just when you put it like that. <laughs> this is going to just devolve into dad jokes. Well, I'm ready for, I'm ready for that. Have you ever done the thing where, uh, Mark Manson first mentioned this, where you're on your laptop, you're on Facebook, and you have this moment of like, no, I'm fucking wasting my time, close the tab, Open a new tab, www.face. No, 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 no. <laughs> and it literally, it's literally happening. It happens to me all the time. Well, that's I, I just default to our Facebook. It's I, deeply the, unconscious. The number, of time, the number of times I think that I think the phone is even worse than laptop. You do a lot of work. I know that you two both try and get yourselves off your phones as much as possible. But the phone is, it's so idiosyncratic. And I think that's a big part of it. Like I know friends who have got a cycle that they move through and the listeners might do as well. They know, right, okay, I'll go top left first because that's Instagram. Then I'll clear off everything on there. Mm. Then I'll go into Facebook. I'll clear off everything on there. But in between all of these, you're answering and replying anyway. So by the time that you've gone through Snapchat and WhatsApp and everything out, Messenger and all the rest of the things... You've actually got number one. Number one's popped again. back up again, yeah. and you're like, right, okay, well, this and is just a fucking. This is just an endless loop. And um, it, it probably gets worse. It's probably you're just fanning the flames of a abso- fire. That'll never absolutely, go because it, it, what it's created, what social media has created, is a sense of missing out. Yeah, that there is stuff happening all around you all the time. Like, but until you open up Instagram and see that your friends are away on holiday, or see that all of your buddies have gone out to the pub, or whatever it is, you don't have that desperate sense of yeah. I'm not part of it Firmer. and by logging in logging uh, checking your news feed you almost begin to start to mitigate that sense of missing out a little bit mm. um, so like I said I don't want to <laughs> I don't know I want, it, I want it to be very very serious because I do think that it is but I don't want people to feel like they're culpable for it because the techniques that are being used 
that manipulate your cognitive biases are not that it's not things that are part of your control. A good quote from the Tristan Harris and Sam Harris, there are many things that are bugs, not features about the human mind. And those are the things that are being manipulated. You're not being encouraged to do things. Your mind's being hacked. And that's the reason that you're staying on site. That's the reason that you're not doing the things that you're so supposed to do. I think do. the trouble is, do you think there's a way to stop you you stand, you probably then have to start defensively using your phone with equal force and thought as the people who are trying to <laughs> so you need to recruit that. a team of a thousand software engineers yeah, so get a supercomputer <laughs> to split test you to use your phone left. it's me versus billion dollar valuation companies in, te- in silicon valley yeah so we well, we talked Bring a little bit. I back, I, back, I, back, I back myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we yeah. In, well, in the last episode with, of distraction is destruction, we covered a few of the tactics that we use ourselves to try and battle it slightly. So Chris was talking about Moment, the app that uh, you set the timer limit on your phone, and when you go over it, it gives you a really annoying bell. I just ignore it. You just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd stopped using. I'd stopped using that. So the, I would. I would advise everyone who's listening to download Moment. It's free. Um, it's on iOS and on Android. Unless you want the proper one. Unless you want the pro version, which we've got. Um, <laughs> which all of us have got because we're pros at not using our phone. No, no. of course. If you ever get pro, you'll get it because you'll email them and ask for it for free. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And they'll, and they'll do it as well. They, yeah, they, will. <laughs> they will do it as well. As oh, well. are you Yusuf from Propane Fitness? You were on our mailing list. <laughs> the, the, the other tactics, I think, were... So for me, WhatsApp is on the sixth page of my apps under a folder called C-U-N-T times 10 uh, <laughs> in capitals. So that when you go to it, you're like, oh, such you, a you, dingus. You just, yeah, it makes it just so that you feel the pain of. I think, I think that, I think that we can probably run through some of the, the best, um, the best tactics that you can use to use your phone less. I do want to try and slot in um, the most insidious tactic I think that any of the any of these social networking sites have added in, which is Snapchat oh. snap snap streaks. Do you know what this is? Is that where you get scores based on how many times you've sent a person a Snapchat? Back and back and forth between someone, but it only it resets if you miss a day. I find it interesting that you you find this the most insidious one because I, I, because I know they said that they thought Snapchat was the biggest uh, exploiter of these tactics. Mm-hmm. I just think it's shit. But you yeah, don't understand. You don't understand. It's it's like seventy five percent of communication online between people under the age of fifteen is done uh, through Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. It's I've a heard it real, arguments, isn't it? The snap, it's a, the snap streak. The thing. snap streak thing. So I heard this story. Right, people go. These kids will go away on holiday with their parents, and they'll give their logins to a friend who's back in the UK, so that they can continue to message their friends backwards and forwards, their other friends, just to keep the snap streaks Jeez. going. And like, there's people with like thousand, thousand day snap streaks of having to message. So that's forcing someone to go back and forth. And I remember uh, one of my ma- one of my mates had an argument with his missus because he broke her, the the snap streak between them. Wow. And you're like, is there anything more inane than that? To like have an of all the things that you could have an argument over, like <laughs> the, I, the, the magic I, is lost as well. Like, because if you're forcing someone to have contact that they wouldn't necessarily have. Oh. Oh, you, you, do you know what you did today, Yusuf? You ruined our forced communication number that judged how many times we had to send a message to each other when we didn't want to. So, yeah, it cheapens it in the first place. But when you break the streak and you just get your head above the water for a second, it's like, <laughs> so, so like when, when I, I broke my MyFitnessPal for like 500 days or something, yeah. and then when I did, I was like, you know what? Like, nothing's burnt down. Like, I'm, it's oh, fine. See, see, I felt like everything had burnt down. Really? <laughs> well, so like, I, I was on... Go. I was. Knocking on the door of a thousand, did a, did a powerlifting competition in the Hearst Welfare Centre in Ashington. There was no reason for It's a to total update. dead spot for all communication. <laughs> Look, tracked everything. On the day of a powerlifting meet, got home, realised that it hadn't synced before After midnight. midnight. Wow. Lost. What a killer. Never get back. Because <laughs> yeah, of the back. Hearst Welfare Centre yeah. in Ashington. So, so, like, Ashington. Ashington, if you listen to this, get some Wi Fi. <laughs> for fuck's it's sake. Like, <laughs> bloody hell. It's, it's like what Yusuf said about when you spend £500. You'll never, you'll always be five hundred pounds worth off, worse off the rest of your life. I mean, that's the most useless analogy for any of this, isn't it? So if you never spend any money, you will always have you're the always money. Always better off, yeah. yeah. You're always better off. He was so shaken by it. He's like, that nine hundred pounds. I'll always be nine hundred pounds worse off forever for the rest of my life. And that's how I feel about my my fitness past three. Think of what I'd be on now. I was annoyed at that. Because... Whatever it is, whatever it is now, plus Sorry. a thousand. It's because you you drive. With, you drive with a functional car into an MOT centre 
<laughs> and it's fine. Like you drove them, and then you, and then you drive you, away. You need to tell. You need to and tell. And you're nine hundred pounds worse off. But there's no difference to you. Like you're still driving a car that's. So, <laughs> but yeah, but it was a, it was a danger to other motorists. You it was a nine hundred pound danger to other motorists. Supposedly, that's like saying you. But go who and, needs brakes? You, but anyway, you, know, like, you should have you gone. Go and, you should have gone. The, I warned you. You should have gone to our guy. I should. We've got a guy. That doesn't surprise me at all. Brakes. We have, are for we have a guy. Anyway, he looks it up so. and down. He kicks the tires a bit. He goes, oh, "I sound oh, that's that. fine." Fucking guy. Turn on. off. Turn back on again. Yeah, yeah, we, right. we we have a saying in Egypt that brakes are for pansies. So right. <laughs> do you? No, <laughs> but the the driving test in Egypt is drive ten meters forwards, drive ten it's meters e- backwards. Easiest place on the world to to pass your driving test, right? Yeah, if you drive, it's carnage. It is <laughs> like people it, reversing up a slip road is a common maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you've got a dash cam. Yeah, isn't it? It just, is. Yeah, I've got a dash just, cam. I thought it was so you could capture all of your dogging experiences on the front of your bonnet. <laughs> Cairo has just been imprinted onto me and dogging, of course, but. Um, you know how many uh, hours of video is watched on YouTube every month? I'd love to know, mm. but I don't know. Guess. So, okay. All right. Come on, Scott. Between us, we can put together a really... Hundreds. Hundreds of hours. At least at least an hour, I reckon. Well, that's oh. just you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like between us, we would watch an hour. A, a Tom month, Martin. Just of Tom Martin. Just of Tom Martin. <laughs> Probably the same video. Yeah. So what? what's the unit of time? A day? No, a month. In a month. A month, fuck. Well, let's let's figure out in a day. So well, let's say I'll just I'll three, just no I, no goddamn. You, you've asked us to guess. And now we, we're going to follow <laughs> through. Don't, don't ask us to do something <laughs> that you don't actually want us to do. Okay. Okay. Right. Five hundred million users daily or more? Might probably more. <coughs> no. Okay. So. Well, it's probably a billion users. Fine. Isn't it? One billion users daily. Each one. Uh, Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, so because there'll be some people, there'll be some people who use it hardly at all, and some mega fine. users. So one hundred and fifty million hours per day times thirty. That's fast maths, isn't it? It's uh, so like, Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian doctor. So let's say four point five trillion hours. Sorry, no, it's not four four point five billion hours. Per one billion. One. Per they month. recently celebrated one billion hours. Oh, per well, month. that's really disappointing. Oh, <laughs> God's sake! Well, I mean, you got your maths wrong. Um, but yeah, they cel- they recently celebrated uh, a billion hours a month, which is like <coughs> mental. It, it's that they, they're celebrating wasting a billion hours of human. They time. could be That's educating. The the argument is, and here's here's the here's the. Um, we need to see the ratios. Mm. Here's, here's the, the sort of the, the, the main thing: Pornhub stats. Well, let's get onto that. We'll get Pornhub yeah. stats up shortly. The the main thing is that inherently using your phone isn't a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if, in retrospect, you wouldn't have wanted to use it. This is the same analogy, and the best analogy that I can come up with is... How do you know that, though? Right, okay. So the best analogy that I can come up with is eating sweets, because what you want, what you want is not necessarily what's always good for you. Right. I want to eat the sweets. In retrospect, am I glad that I ate the sweets? No, I'm in a fucking deficit at the moment. Why would I have eaten those sweets? In fact, I I would argue that from the... Okay, let's say from half an hour after you've eaten the sweets, forever in the future, you... Wished that you hadn't eaten the sweets <laughs> for half an hour after spending immediately after spending nine hundred pounds on an MOT. <laughs> so, like, but you actually it, probably didn't want to spend nine hundred pounds in advance. Yeah, he never did. No. Yeah. So he it never a time. Now, never a time. Yeah. So let, let's get back to the sweets. So, <laughs> so fucking bring it up, Chris. <laughs> it's really painful. Yeah. Um, Developing a twitch. <laughs> so, so like if if someone said, "Would you have wanted to eat those sweets from last year or a month ago or?" three hours ago, you'd always say, I wish I hadn't. Because unless all it, unless is, you fit your macros. If they fit your macros, yeah. That's again, that's, it, that's the, there's a Goldilocks zone for how much you can use your phone, right? Got it. Um, and here's, here's one so of the big... people need phone macros. Yeah, pretty much. Here's one of the big things, and it's that outrage online always travels further than positivity. And because of the way that the newsfeed optimization works, this is specific to Facebook, outrage is more attractive than positivity. That means that you are more likely to click on outrage. All that the yeah. computer is then going to start feeding you is more of what you want. More outrage. Hang on. But what about the sweet analogy? I I, I, I ate the sweets, but I kind of didn't want to eat the sweets, but I did kind of want to eat the sweets. I don't want to click on the outrage. I don't want to be delivered more outrage. Mm. But all that the computer is doing is delivering more of what its job is, which is to maximize time on site and to maximize click-throughs. Plus, when you have a sweet, I think it creates... The immediate desire for another sweet. 
Mm-hmm. As soon as you've had the sweet, you, you don't think, that was lovely, mm-hmm. enough, enough's enough. You think, that was nice, I'll have another one. In fact, that's a really good analogy because we know that your the bacteria that develop in your gut as a result of certain foods will cause, they'll interact with your brain and cause you to crave more of the same food. And so that's a double-edged sword, as with outrage, that if you consume lots of outrage, that's going to then change your mental environment over time and change the general tone and emotion that you're experiencing, the mood that you're experiencing throughout the day. Well, one you know, of the, the same one way of, people do gratitude journals because they want to fill themselves with positivity. Mm-hmm. And one of, one of the main things is that because because of how Facebook works and because it delivers news to people who they know want to see it. There was a time online where if the word Trump was in an article, it would be top of your newsfeed, irrelevant of what you'd clicked on. There was a brief period where that happened. What, so, so Trump just... Trump. Literally Trump. To the top. Everything. To the top, top literally Trump, it trumped yeah. it, top Trumps. Wow. Um, and yeah, Facebook. the thing with Facebook is that because it will get you to click on things that you have a particular cognitive bias towards, yeah. it segregates you into these echo chambers online mm. with other like-minded people that share the shit that you want to click on, it's but not- that you potentially don't want to click on. And you don't even know you're in it. No, it's and the outrage not good for you. It's not. It's not <laughs> good for you at all. Um, so, unless you're right, in which case it's fine. Then you just confirm. Then you're right. Yeah, confirm. <laughs> right. Thank you. I'm right. <laughs> Take <laughs> that. Um, I think that talking about some solutions for this is probably a big deal. The first, the first part of it, the first thing that I wanted to try and achieve was to let everyone know that it, that it is a little bit of a problem. It's a massive problem and that you do need to be conscious of how much you use your phone. And I don't want it to be... It, I would ac- actually argue now that it has come for me a, a real vice when that I'm self-referential about when I use my phone. I, like, regret. I regret being so silly as to have used it, which mm. previously, up until learning that you were potentially being manipulated and that it is not time well spent, that's something that you might not have done. Um, mm. But the end goal is more worthwhile. It's the same thing as knowing, like, up until the, the point at which you knew that smoking might cause cancer, you were fine smoking a cigarette. Now that you know that it might do, you feel guilty about smoking a cigarette. This is something I used to enjoy. Now it's something that I feel is... I've heard a similar thing about porn, which is that your face lit up as soon as porn. <laughs> no, I, I had an idea. Just, never mind. So, <laughs> there's a, there, there was a count... You know how, like... So the amount of porn on the internet's increased rapidly over time mm-hmm. there was a point in time where no one watched any porn mm-hmm. now porn's I mean you'll tell us the stats in a second you'll give you some stats there's a lot porn. of porn yeah. and then there's an argument to say actually worrying about how much porn you watch is more, can be more damaging than just watching a bit so of that, porn that, that's what I was going to say was that Chris said that you have to that you use your phone if you get a net benefit from mm. using it and what you've done by creating a cycle of guilt with using your phone is that you've reduced the net benefit that you get from using your phone. Or potentially removed the chance of getting a net benefit completely. Mm-hmm. Which could, could be a good thing. It, you just could, see... could have pulled it under. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you've actually tricked yourself into using your phone less in a very convoluted way. Mm-hmm. Which is good. You know what? I would love to see, and I don't know whether this is exists. some stats on Pornhub because I've got some mint stats. I, I would love to see them, but separately. So the, the Cambridge Analytica stuff, like before I left the house, there was a new story about mm-hmm. something about Facebook leaking data to third-party apps and things like that. I would love to know whether Facebook time on screen has decreased since all this came out. And I would I would that, imagine... I'd love to know that as well. I imagine it hasn't. I bet it took a very marginal dip mm. and then it's gone but right look at what But look at what's the number one news source for most people. Is it Facebook? Facebook. Mm. It's, it's actually Twitter. People are finding out actually, about Facebook news news leaks. On Facebook. Data leaks on, on Facebook. On Facebook. And, and surely Facebook can just remove just, anything no, that was news feeds that no. mentioned that. Well, do you, remember when, do you remember when Google got pulled for putting their own... Um, shopping yeah, at the top. Uh, things at the top of, of particular lists. There's like this fair use policy thing, isn't it? Like where, well, this is my platform. I can do with mm. it what I want. Well, no, actually, you're supposed to be um, neutral in a way. But okay, you're neutral at, de- at the content that you deliver, but not neutral at delivering the content. Mm. It's a tough one, though, isn't it? It is really. It's, in one way, like they're not a charity. They, you know, they're a business. Mm-hmm. Profit-driven, like, of course, they're going to advertise their own services on their own platform. Mm. 
But I think I think the other thing to consider is as well that everyone believes that if you were to if you were to look at this from a um, a very critical perspective, you would think that all of the guys in Silicon Valley are wearing black hoods and long noses, mm-hmm. sat around a wooden table chanting and like doing like the just this nefarious company that's maliciously trying to steal your time. But they're not. They're just trying to maximize profit. Mm. Profit is the attention economy means that profit is directly or revenue is directly related to time on site. That means that maximizing time on site is all that matters. And, that, and if outrage and cognitive bias manipulation and snap streaks and autoplay videos that's and, kind of worse in a way that, that there's no conscious or moral consideration at all. Would it be worse than if they were saying we actually want to go out of our way to destroy people's lives? The, I mean, that that would be worse, but I think but, <laughs> but, but there wouldn't be much like benefit. Well, at least to, at least it's then very linear what's happening. Because hmm. like, if you can, this, this is their pure intention. They're achieving it. If you can change, point. if you could, if you could, Tristan Harris's argument is: if you could change the economy to reward businesses somehow based on how much value they add to someone's life, mm. rather than their time on site, they would change in a heartbeat. But is that not what Zuck Zuck's trying to do? Because you know, time well spent is a snippet from his that his big post that he did. It's the other way around. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, it's, so Zuck Zuck copied Tristan. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, is that not why he's saying like all of the fake news is going to be removed and like we're going to penalise? Like business pages and that's fine, but again, all of that is what we're talking about. There mm. is the content that's being delivered, not how uh, not you the, deliver the not content. The message, not right. Yeah, and you know because he's not going to say, "Oh, we actually want to encourage you to spend less time on Facebook." What he wants you to do is the time on Facebook that you spend to be more meaningful, which is fine. But there is always like no one's attacking BuzzFeed, mm. but I've never once read a BuzzFeed article that afterwards I haven't regretted. And that is, an, yeah. that is a factual statement. That's because they're misbranded. It's just clickbait shite, isn't mm. it? Should we have a look at some stats on Pornhub? <laughs> so the I I want take I take my hat off to the an, analyst, the analyst who nice <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, who does the Pornhub annual stats. They are right. I imagine it's a, it's a data team. I would have I thought. Probably like, it is. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a bloke with it's a spreadsheet. A <laughs> like. Bloody hell, mate! Do you know how much porn we've watched this year? Um, Go up, you know. Uh, <laughs> what, what has? Precisely. 28, 28.5 billion annual visits to Pornhub. This is the most interesting stat, right? Twenty-eight point five. It's only four per year per person. Four what? Four visits per year per person. That's presuming that all every seven person, million, seven billion every people on the planet the world, is accessing Pornhub, including newborns and <laughs> yeah, people on their deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> People in third world countries. Just once every three months. But they're struggling some, to get running water. There's some, abidig- there's some abidiginals somewhere. <laughs> but they've fucking got Pornhub. <laughs> um, so 28.5 billion annual visits to Pornhub, but only 25 billion searches performed. And what that means is that... That means they've nailed the home 3.5 billion people have clicked on something that's appeared on their on suggested the uh, videos at the start. Now... That's I don't mean. Me- I don't mean. Mental. I don't mean to sound like an aficionado, <laughs> but I've got higher standards for my porn than just clicking on the first thing that comes through. I mean, you, you, the you lowest the, common denominator here. Quality. You've chosen. You've chosen to watch something that's taken no investment for you, from you to watch. So mm-hmm. just the to very <laughs> least that you could do is fucking refine it. Yeah. At least just click, someone's just gone on and gone. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. First one. Porn. I found some porn. <laughs> Yeah. Indiscriminate. So I, I would like to play devil's advocate and say that <laughs> we don't know that those 3.5 billion that were hits but didn't search necessarily clicked on a video. They may have gone on it and been like, oh no, not today. I'm not going to porn today. And closed <laughs> no, it. Not porn. They had, they had a really difficult discussion think... with themselves about their no fab. They opened it and they were like, oh, no. This probably is, a, there'll, be a, there'll be a chunk of people in there who go on there and do leave. For so that what, reason. I wonder what the split is. People who just click on a the first video I, they see. I think that the number of people who type Pornhub in, visit Pornhub, and then decide not to use Pornhub is probably in the minority. Really? This is not... Because with Facebook, I often will open Facebook and then be like, no, hang on. What am I doing? So I think that the, the emotional, psychological, hormonal drivers behind looking at Pornhub versus looking at Facebook are quite different. Now, I don't, okay. I don't know what you do on Facebook. 
<laughs> or what you do on Pornhub for that matter. Can you believe this? This is the this is the best stat. Over the course of 2017, there were 120 million video votes on Pornhub, which is a million votes more than was cast in the last US presidential that election. That is mental, isn't it? <laughs> so what you fuck Cambridge Analytica? Yeah. So we'll harness just speak harness to the Pornhub. Who runs Pornhub. <laughs> We need to know how many uniques there are because otherwise, (laughs) (laughs) because that that could be one guy voting 120 million times. That bloke's got a lot of time. He's got yeah. That that's a guy really focusing on time well spent, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I want to know, and I have a burning desire to know this: is how many people pay for Pornhub Premium? Oh yeah. They're 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 definitely not going to reveal that, are they? Because it would be terrifyingly low. Because the, I, so I bet you it isn't. The variety of content that you get already on Pornhub, just like, well. So, so they're operating the freemium model. So they they over deliver on the front end, <laughs> and and what that makes everybody think is, holy fuck, what must the paid model look like? Are they public? Jab, jab 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 right hook. J- exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Gary. It's just Gary Vaynerchuk behind the whole. Thing. Gary Vaynerchuk is just behind the list. I wouldn't have thought so. Because seeing their financials would be. Do you know what they did? The, um, Joe Rogan did an interview with the guy who was involved in the startup of Pornhub, and they just bought up everything. Uh, they bought it, so bought, X bought. and XX, X uh, Hamster, like they bought every video streaming service as it came up, bought it in, used like, still ran it as a separate. Digital. No, 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 oh, still, it's, so it's still oh, run yeah. as like a separate site or whatever, but they own it. They own, like, I, the um, stat of how much they own, I want to say, like, Someone might call me out on this, but I want to say it's like more than 80% of like porn streaming <laughs> worldwide they command is under there. It's a bit like but Unilever, if- where they, they just buy out all the different soap companies and it look, you get the illusion of choice. You go into the it's shop. It's all just Unilever. Yeah. It's all just yeah. the same. It's all just porn. But I mean, if, if, there was, if, there was some, <laughs> if there was some real like um, market fair, uh, like a, a governing body here, Regulators There'd absolutely be a, a like yeah. a monopoly claim going in, but the fact of the matter is, it's porn. So everyone's like, oh, "No, no, come on, oh, oh God, no, to speak to the porn people." So wet, like <laughs> someone write them a letter. No, I'm not writing it. <laughs> you're right, they'll come back all soppy. <laughs> um, so, uh, right, let's do some reductions of phone use strategies. Mine have developed since last year. Since we okay. last did that, my my What's main one, my 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 main one is that. When you are in in an inertial frame of reference, the likelihood of you staying on your phone is higher. So if you're lying down, it's more likely than if you're sitting. And if you're sitting, it's more likely than if you're standing. And if you're standing, it's more likely than if you're walking. Uh, So the fact is... Jumping. Jumping, yeah, yeah, flying, (laughs) flying, (laughs) flapping, fapping, fapping, snatching. Do not try and snatch with... Chin-ups. Unless you're Dimitri Klokov. It's impossible, isn't it? Use your phone while you're doing a chin-up. It depends how strong you are. One-handed chin-up, fine. Um, basically, oh, what? Deadlift. Oh yeah. Did lift. Did lift. Did lift. Impossible. Um, basically, don't use your phone. Don't use your phone when you're in an inertial frame of reference. So, if you are, um, <laughs> he's just trapped his between his chin and his between his beard, his Arab beard. What's it? What's he trapped? His, his phone. Oh. His penis. <laughs> it just, you just said you trapped, just trapped his trapped between his. his. Speaking of which, um, Robbie trapped his glans penis doing. Uh, Lateral raises. Glans or Megaly Negrum? <laughs> it, it's possible. What's a, what's a, what's a b- bruised clitoris? Clitoro Megaly Negrum. Yeah. Well, if you are an Olympic weightlifter, potentially one who's coming back from the Commonwealth Games, which was recently in Australia, um, and you are suffering with Clitoro Megaly Negrum, <laughs> we had get someone, in contact. We had someone uh, opt into our email list called Zoe Smith, right? Who, there's a, there's a weightlifter who's just come back from the Commonwealth Games, called Zoe Smith. You have made a cake with her once. <laughs> so, email, just presumed. Emailed her and went, is this the same Zoe Smith that I made a cake with? She emailed us. Look at him, deleting the... Delete the <laughs> I'm not deleting anything, I'm just... Uh, is this the, the same Zoe down. Smith? No reply. So uh, do you think she it, replied to you? She replied to me saying, sadly not. Oh, gutted. <laughs> That's a shame. So, Sorry for this. Sorry for this time, 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 time reduction on your phone. Safe way. Best, best thing, be, best few things to do. Um, do not sleep with your phone by your bed. So, put your phone over the, the bed f- by your phone. Put your phone over the far side of the room. Put the charger over the far side of the room is the first step. That means that if you want the phone to be charged the next day, you've got to go over there. Stacking the deck in your favour against having it near your bed. Um, it means that when you wake up on a morning, like, I can't believe, I cannot believe 
that these like doormat alarm clocks that you have to stand on for 10 seconds oh, that's cool. have been a, well, I mean, that's just you all over, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Were you about to criticise it? Yes. Just put your phone, put the alarm um, on your phone and put the I'm phone over the other phone. I order one on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I know you and want. And then try and cancel my account and I can't. You can't do it. Um, yeah, put your phone over the far side of the room, uh, ideally next to the window, so it means that when you wake up in the morning, you do that. My advice would be do not look at your phone for anything other than turning off your alarm clock unless you are desperately need to do it, i.e. waiting for someone to come and pick you up. Police. P- police. Yeah. Do not, do not pick your phone up until after you've done everything that you need to do in the morning. That includes making breakfast, having coffee, setting yourself up for the day, ideally until you get in the car. If you're doing meditation, if you're doing Romward, if you're doing anything else, look at the phone. Like when you open up the phone, direct yourself immediately to the app that you need to use. Um, second one from me is to remove all social media websites from the homepage of your phone. I think that for many people, almost everybody uses their phone in some way or another that's related to work or contacting friends. And I think that an outright deletion of social media off your phone can be a little bit extreme for some people, although that's the goal. Take it off your home screen and move it into a folder somewhere that you need to swipe through for quite a while to get to. Also remove the number notifications from everything except for things that are generated by other humans so for me, I've kept mine on for Messenger, for Facebook. I've kept mine on for WhatsApp, but not for group chats. The reason is that if someone has messaged me specifically, that's probably actually worthy of my time. I know that it sucks you into using the phone, but that for me, it's probably not far off time. So that's been. not, you wouldn't count Facebook as human generated? Uh, for the most part, because there is an un, uh, there is a unfair weight towards computer generated. That right. Um, or so it's the, messages, basically. But emails, messages. Yeah, direct, direct. How do you stuff. eliminate group chat notifications on WhatsApp? One button, notifications, group chat. You can't do, yeah, you really? Can't do that. Yeah. yeah. And you can leave like normal ones on. I'm going to do that now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then turn off also group direct. Chats. Well, group group chats. The problem with group chats the is that, my life. Yeah, they just they can rack up like really really quick. And you've I think got, if you have them on notification, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But if you're on your home screen, you look at your home screen. Kills you. Can't do it. Um, next one, oh, Johnny. Have you got? got oh, you've already got it. Off. I've already, I've already ignored you. But it's still bothering you. <laughs> Just the idea of them. <laughs> uh, Johnny, what have you got? Have you got any tactics that you use for phone reduction? Um, so the one, I mean, you both experienced when I went through my phase with my shit phone. Mm-hmm. I think for me, that is the one that I would aspire to, to be. At. Briefly explain that. So I bought a £20 phone on Amazon, which is the most basic phone you can imagine. Like it has a torch. What did he call it again? Shit, Shit phone. The, the bastard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the bastard. <laughs> you motherfucking bastard. Yeah, the bastard. Um, so B- it, D-H-A-R-S-T-A. So, which is a reference to a YouTube video because we all spend too much time on YouTube. And YouTube that we can actually reference something yeah. like 150 million. I, <laughs> if anyone would like access to the funniest collection of YouTube videos, I, I that is no exaggeration. Yousef's, how many? 700? Probably, yeah. Uh, like, it is curated content. Like, it is really high quality. That's fantastic. time well spent. That is time excellently spent. Excellently yeah. well spent? Fine. So, yeah. Um... And for a 24-hour period once a week, take your SIM card out of your iPhone or or your Android and put it into the shit phone. And then you wake up the next day and it is weird. What were the barriers that you found for that strategy? So, you, so the, hard, the hardest thing is, or was, day, like I would go with my girlfriend somewhere. So like she'd be shopping or we'd be like, we'd go to Tesco and you find yourself in these periods of dead time where you you go to check it anyway. Mm-hmm. So I find myself getting it out of my pocket and looking at it and then thinking, oh, an hey, what the fuck am I doing? I mean, that's the, that's the, what big... am I going to really see? What am I going to do? Like turn the torch on and off. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. I've done that 50 times today. Already. The battery's <laughs> fucked. That's so interesting that it's the, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, an compuls- it's compulsive. The, the phantom compulsion. Is yeah. It's there. such a, it's, that's the idiosyncrasy side of it. There's this really good, um, a, meme that I saw online it's about a guy sitting on the subway 
And this person's speaking in the third person. They're saying, I saw this guy sitting across from me. They sat across from me on rush hour on the, on the train as everyone else was sat looking at their phones. And he was just sat there staring out of the window like, like a psychopath. A psychopath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like sitting having a coffee. Just with not, no not texting. texting. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the, the compulsion to check. And this is the thing because the in- introspection occurs. That's such a new thing as well. 10 years ago. That wouldn't be normal. Been, no. yeah. yeah. Introspection occurs during periods of boredom. Mm. Like periods of boredom allow you to ask yourself questions throughout the day. Sit, just sit and think. Yeah. yeah. Like when do you have, like if you were told to go and sit in a room now for 30 minutes, and you couldn't meditate. Mm. So you couldn't actually do what we would do when we had a little bit of silence. And you were told to go and sit in a room for 30 minutes. The number of people that would give up. So it's that, considered the greatest punishment to put someone in solitary, in, in solitary confinement. Well, there's like, no stimulus. There's yeah, nothing. Which, like that that pe- is the people worst, would, highest level. People prison, would prefer to be in <laughs> with prison with rapists <laughs> and criminals. Than by themselves. Than on their own. Yeah. And there's been... My first thought with, for that is I would just... Thousands of hours of meditation. Nail it. Well, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Like, Retreat. I want to be the man. Maybe 20. Maybe, like, I want to be 20. <laughs> maybe 20. <laughs> like, I'd come out of prison everyone else had a terrible time. And I was, maybe 20. My, so, mindful as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Just glowing um, blue light. Okay, so you had your... You but had your yeah, so the, there, is, there is the ultimate fear of... You go to... You take the SIM card out of your phone and there's this fear sets in of, like, what is going to happen over the next 24 hours? Oh, iMessage. What about... Yeah. So I think a lot of that for me is business related, mm-hmm. but I know that there's a scone covering I'm just it. You. If there's, yeah. So you did sometimes call me, but the the thing about that is that when you called me on my shit phone days, there is this utter fear that sets in because you're like, I know that he will have hesitated before ringing me. This and needs he's to be still fucking ringing serious. Me. Yeah. And and so you you, you the sat there calls, and it goes like. Beep, 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 you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, God, it's my phone ringing. What? Oh, let's change the ringtone. <laughs> Beep. Hello? <laughs> and you can barely hear him. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna break. I'm going to break the fourth wall of podcast recording and say that I'm, next week there is going to be a conversation with Kai Wei, who is CEO of thelightphone.com. However, I've already had the discussion with him. <laughs> So, um, but that's that's really interesting and you'll find out what is potentially a more palatable uh, solution to Johnny's shit phone problem yeah. the shite phone the shit phone problem there are so many shit phone problems that mainly it takes a lot of discipline to say I'm going to have a shit phone day tomorrow mm. and there's always a reason to have a shit phone day mm. uh, Yusuf some strategies very similar to yourselves I think the, the general principle with everything we've said so far is make the good decision as easy as possible and make the bad decision as hard as possible. So we have the... Low-hanging fruit, right? Exactly, yeah. So we have the the apps on the final page and call it something like you're a dick. Um, there's grayscaling your phone, which I tried for a while. Mm, but I've then, tried that too. It doesn't really do much. It, it just annoyed me. I don't think it mm. made me use it less. It just meant that when I took photos, I had to double-check that the... Um, <laughs> I tried making okay. the background black, <clears throat> and I think that does a bit. Okay. Which makes it slightly less visually stimulating. Mm. The grayscale is irritating. Mm. I think that that probably sacrifices some of the experience of what you are going to use it for, whilst the actually grayscale. not yeah. making much of a difference In to the your... things that you want it to change. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, the only other things for me is I always have it on silent, um, unless... It, and I have, everything's on do not disturb mode except for a select few people that when they call me it am, will, I, am I one of those through, people of course oh um, you're, Johnny yeah. if Johnny isn't it's going to be really awkward <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, your tip it's just my business partner <laughs> I'm sure it's fine <laughs> he's not got anything important to say <laughs> well, you, you were the one who influenced me to turn off all notifications that has been the biggest that's liberation. massive it's incredible it's such a, such a big change and the thing is like you can you can keep a, f- a select few I've got personal messages on WhatsApp. I've got iMessage. Facebook's gone. Twitter's gone. All Facebook pages, if you run Facebook pages, you'll know what we mean from the app. That's gone. I bet you've got, have you got ads manager notifications on? No. Do you know? Just Stripe. Um, just Stripe. Just Honestly. when I make money. So, yeah, um, so the only no, the only time my phone makes a noise is either when Yusef changes the time that he's going to purchase Kabuki movement systems. <laughs> <laughs> or, so calendar. <laughs> Calendar reminders or when we make a sale. I think calendar reminders, although I don't have notifications for that, I 
make an exception for it, I think, because... It's important, isn't it? You made that notification yeah. to remind or you... Or is someone else putting something in my schedule for me, which is also important. I mean, isn't, but, it, isn't, it, isn't it crazy that we're, we're sat discussing ways to... Stop the things that we voluntarily bought from... This thousand pound, we were, we this thousand really pound a year investment. This thousand pound a year investment that is with us 24 hours a day, the most ubiquitous piece of technology that's probably ever existed... And we're having to come up with strategies to try and fight back against billion-dollar companies. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's really powerful, which makes it fantastic in many ways. Like the things you can do with it are brilliant, unbelievable. But, but that it's, it, everything has a side effect, doesn't it? How much? How much? Of the, how much of what we're talking about is time well spent? Like because for me, like it, the uh, Tristan came up with some good some good um, stats on it, and he says that number one, two, and three: Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat the three most regretted uses of apps. And I think that um, one, two, and three of the, on the opposite end of the scale was my fitness pal, actually, mm. weirdly enough, as one of the ones that's not regretted. Yeah. Yeah. As highly um, podcasts and uh, mindfulness apps. Yeah. You mm. never like sit and think, Oh, I wish I hadn't wasted so much time on my fitness pal today. Like it's, yeah. mm, it's, it's kind of, it's been productive. Like you don't, you don't go in and scroll through and like spend too much time <laughs> looking at like whether, whether Daz Charles hit his macro. <laughs> That's true. Ma- macro, yeah. um, even though they try to, but mm. the other thing for me is I've never had Facebook on my phone and Facebook for me out of those apps is the most, used to be the most compulsive, but now on the Mac as well, I've got a mod that stops the newsfeed from showing up. And so now it's just I'm Chrome never, newsfeed blocker, I think it's called. I think maybe, like yeah. So um, I, I so only use it for... I got that as well. Purity. So yeah, Facebook, Facebook purity. purity. So really good. Facebook for me is only used for work or marketplace selling tea towels <laughs> for two pounds. So what, what that's like, and I don't know whether you were about to say this, but it's you, when you go on to use Facebook and the newsfeed's blocked, it's like you have to use the menu items to navigate what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You don't just get dragged into like the first thing that appears. Mm-hmm. Because I'm such a sucker for that and I know that I am. And mm. so there's no point in me saying, oh, you know what? I'll just exert more willpower and just um, not get sucked into the news. Yeah. Feed. I mean, one of, one of the f- the most crazy ones, and this will happen to absolutely everybody. I'm going to touch on two two things here. One of the most crazy ones, you've had a long day at work. You've been out, you've maybe been at the gym. You haven't been in the house for like 12 hours, something like that. You get back, you park the car up on the drive, you take your phone out and then you sit in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. There is no more shameful use yeah. of your phone That's, than that. Yeah. Sitting in the car outside your house. Outside your own house. <laughs> Waiting I've to done go. That before as well. It happens oh. yeah. all the time. So it's when your it's when your your willpower and discipline is at its absolute lowest and yeah. you're like, I'm tired. I just, I can't be bothered. Like, oh, that's a nice, red, shiny thing to look at. And then you're in. It's the same as like when you're too tired to go to bed. Mm. And you, you a little bit, but it's just, or something and a, just like, yeah, I suppose so. Or that you know that you've got to, but even with this, it's like you could do the phone thing while you move. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you could stand up, but it's the inertial frame of reference again, right? You're comfortable. It's warm. Yeah, it's sat. You sat in the car. You've been there for a while. You've probably been thinking about using your phone. And here's mm. here's another thing. Like, and I, I don't know why this isn't a bigger deal. Like, how many Instagram stories do you see of people? And we've all been like, well, maybe not all of us. I don't know make you culpable as well but a lot of us have been uh, culprits of doing this like, how many Instagram stories do you see of people while they're fucking driving like they're driving down the street doing Instagram no like there's the vast majority of Instagram users that drive will be able to attest to it and you're like mm. that's a really fiddly thing to do while how you're driving fucking well. de- like I mean I, you know I don't want to fucking put myself in the firing line but how are the police not going mate mm. that's a video of you doing something illegal in your car. Yeah. Apparently, police are now riding buses to look down. They look down, yeah, yeah, look above to see people. They have they? Va- special lorries that they take on motorways to look down on people. Wow. And look across at lorry drivers. To look down on, to just, just judge people. To just people. go, like, look how small and shit your car is compared to my big lorry. <laughs> just looking down on you. Yeah. Yeah. But there's that clip of that guy, you see the, the guy on his phone, who killed. The- He'd sent, like, what was it, like 20 messages in the space of, like, 10 miles or something like that. And then it just drove straight in the back of a car, killed the entire family. Oh, God. And I don't know, like, it's... <laughs> but here's, here's the thing, right? That, that that there, like, do people want to be on their phone? Like, is your is using your phone while you're in the car time well spent for you? Or yeah. is it just... Are you newsfeed scrolling? And we, we all... We all... Uh, uh, someone who I know has a problem with doing it. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> it's a difficult problem that many yeah. people face. It's and one of those things that it's fine until it's not, and then you're like, that was not worth the text message that I sent or the. Of course it's not. Yeah, of course it's not. And it's all, it's the mo- so for me, I think the, the thing you said about not not looking at it when um, so something that that Dan Gibson Dab. DAB digital, digital audio, audio broadcasting Gibson, Gibson. <laughs> has just mentioned to me, which it really interests me because he he always strikes me as he's a, he's a busy guy. Like from the moment he wakes up to the to about seven o'clock at night, he's like he's up, up rushing, up at five, training, trains, like yeah. in the, pinching every second out of his morning. Then he's at work. He's, oh my god, what work finishes, and he's like, I often ask, I'll allow myself thirty minutes in the evening to check social media. And he seems he seemed really on top of it. And the other day he told me that he's experimenting with not allowing himself to look at social media in the morning. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. So it's eroding away at you as well. Like it's obviously what used to be a very controlled in the yep. evening, 30 minutes. It's now creeping into the morning. Yep. Now he's like, it's got to the point where I feel like I need to put a boundary on this. I think the easiest way to do it for me, and this is the, this harks back, I'm sure that if there's anyone who understands habit setting better than I do or we do, that they, the, this will be a common tactic. But I made the rule about when I was going out for drinks, if I was on a stint of sobriety and it was my birthday and I knew that I wanted to have some drinks but not too many, I had to set myself a hard line rule. Mm. And it's the same with the phone. When you're trying to stop yourself from doing something your mind wants to do, but in retrospect you don't. Mm-hmm. The, what was it, the current self versus the remembered self. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you need to set very, very hard lines. And one of the easiest ones to do is to say, right, up until a particular point, I'm not going to look at my phone in the morning. The After best... a particular point, I'm not going to look at my phone on a night. Yeah, well, the, the most productive time I've ever had in my life, and I, I don't know why I don't go back to it, <laughs> is, is when I was I was no Wi-Fi until 3 p.m. How did you do it? Did you not automate that? You literally just went over and flicked the switch. Yeah. So just um, go to bed, turn everything off, turn Wi-Fi and connection off on everything. And then next day, wake up purely offline, work until 3 p.m. Is it, um, and then have If you're a knowledge worker, you asked to communicate with other people, that's probably going to be difficult. Um, then I, w- I would manually turn it on for that one task and then turn it back off again. Oh my God. Um, that is serious. And I had a 30 minute allocation for social media, WhatsApp messages wow. at 6 p.m. And it was beautiful. It was I mean, that, is, that is the absolute... <laughs> Extreme, and then I slipped out of the habit, and now my life's a mess. So the, so. the, the thing is, so I, I what, what I found, I asked, I said to Dan, "What are you doing?" Digital to, audio, digital audio broadcast, broadcast just, just for anyone who's confused. Yeah, how what are you doing to ensure that you don't check your phone before midday? Because for me, saying like, I "Oh, I'll just not do that." It's like you know, when people set a goal like tomorrow, I'm gonna yeah. go on a diet. It's like it's something that requires willpower. It's something mm-hmm. that is probably currently your norm mm-hmm. and to just click your fingers and change. Yeah. Especially in the morning, you wake up, your phone's by your bed, you reach over, turn off your laptop. Not if it's on the other side of the... No, of course. And there's loads of red things to check. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, that looks exciting. Check that. Before you know it, you're in. 30 minutes down down the line and you've been on your phone Well, you you got a physical alarm clock, didn't you? Mm. Just to... Just to avoid Eliminate that. And I think it's such a good idea. I think you need... Yeah. But what what we're talking about here is is harking back to what you said, Yusuf, which is making the, the choice you want to make either in retrospect or in advance, as easy as possible. And the choice that you don't want to make, as difficult as possible. Mm. So, yeah, you're right that on a morning it's difficult not to check your phone, but it's a piece of piss if it's not in your hand. Yeah, You cannot put check it, your it. phone if it's not there. So put it put it somewhere. Mm. You know what I started doing that was to break the um, idiosyncratic habit? At the start of this year, I put my phone in my other pocket. Mm. The number of times that I've taken my wallet out recently. <laughs> and obviously I will... I will spend 10 minutes pressing, the, pressing your wallet. And yeah. Like, I don't think I have a consistent pocket. I do. I have it. It always goes in my pocket. So, um, but yeah, I think you you just need to try and do things that are going to stack the deck in your favour, and for the most part, that involves just putting your phone away. So, so I think that starts with trying to spot your own patterns, doesn't it? Yeah. Right now, like when when is it that you look at your phone? Like when are you? When do you get really chewed up with time? Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, you, I'm sat down with a, a doctor and an accountant. They were fairly figures based. You cannot um, derive much from the research without having figures. Yeah, and you need to have some figures. So rescue down- time and moment. Yeah, rescue time two. is rescue time is moment for MacBook, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's so- depressing when you look at the annual report or the monthly report. Send you an email on a Sunday. Sends me an email every Sunday. I, I- 
And do you know what? You know what Naturally, my... I unsubscribed from any possible. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't know about that. But uh, you know what my yeah. I, so I did my my all time. <laughs> That's the most valuable part of it. I I just checked it on the website. Oh. He goes in and does it by choice. Um, you know my total phone time since we started using Moment, which was after Distraction is Destruction, eighty about eighteen months ago. How much? My my total phone time is just under four thousand hours. In 18 months. I spend um, what, over a third of my waking life on my phone. And this is someone who's trying to do everything in his power. It, it'll take it'll take you... I'm not going to get the full stats. I'm just going to get the... Dailies. Yeah. Because um, you can see it, it gives you a percent, as you just listed, it gives you a percentage of... Uh, waking time on yeah. your phone. A third sounds about right. The tip that I was going to say that you told me about was put your apps into a few folders or off the home screen mm-hmm. and then use the search function yeah. to get to it, which is, it, it feels the same to me as the, um, f- the newsfeed blocker because you yeah. go on Facebook and you're like, what am I, what am I here to do? Yeah. You have to be mindful to choose it. Yeah. So which that's, is the same. that's an option. If you go into Siri uh, on your on your phone, if you use an Android, then I have no idea. Um, but if you go into settings and then Siri and turn off Siri app suggestions, then take all of your apps off the home screen and put them into folders to get to the apps. The most convenient way or the quickest way to do it is to swipe down from the top and to type into a search bar what it is that you want. But to do that, you need to make a conscious choice to type the letter of the app that you want and to begin the process, which just gives you a little bit of automatic, gives you a moment, just a little bit of a moment to just just think, why am I here? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah. It's less of a compulsion um, because I found that having the same way that a river cuts through a bend to find the quickest way, I managed to find a shortcut to my own shit folder routine. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, me too. Like within, within three days I'd found a quicker way that was quicker than when it used to be on my home screen. Oh no, that's and even worse then. That's so, my home screen. Yeah. I have to go one, two to find my folder, folder called time wasting. That's where I spend most of my time. <laughs> <laughs> so Time spending. You, you just realise that you are such a fickle bastard who will just overcome everything you put in your own way. Which but is again, why shit fun. It's not your, it's not your choice. Uh, thank fault. you very much. Check out the Distraction is Destruction podcast. I'll make sure that that is in the links. Links to the, what was it, the Choice Architecture? What was oh, the one that you sent us uh, on YouTube? Dark, what was it called? Dark Patterns. Dark, dark Patterns, patterns um, on YouTube. Links to Tristan Harris with Sam Harris and a couple of other websites that you may be interested in. If you want to find out any more or if you've got any questions, feel free to tweet me or the guys online and we'll catch you next time. We've got more life hacks coming up. We've got Kai Wei coming up, Daniel Head from Romward, and Quinn Hennick of Juggernaut Training Systems. Thank you, bye. Bye. Bye.